Okay, let's go ahead and get started. So, what was today's reading? <laughs> That's right, and you have the book. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, right. So, so that's kind of an odd reading for today because of what I wrote in the email regarding the fact that that we're trying to express ourselves and we want to really express ourselves and we want to guide ourselves. And we really want to guide ourselves, and so censorship is an, is that idea of finding balance, right? And so. Yeah, we want to get out. We want to, you know, go crazy. Mm, no. We want to pull back just a little bit, right? And we want to make sure things are going our way, but we can't restrict it so far that it doesn't work for anybody else, right? And so this time of year, with the uh, energy of the season, the yang is just going. It's up, it's out, it wants to make things happen, it wants to go, and it's got to remember grandma from the winter saying, it's okay. Take it easy. Don't get too sideways. You know, just relax. Um, and the parent can't do it, so you have to remember that. This is the time of year where if you are used to talking to yourself like a parent, it isn't going to work. You have to talk to yourself like a grandparent. Much more reserved, much more relaxed, much more aged and more wisdom involved than the parent-child relationship. Because the parent-child relationship is a very simple relationship, but it's headstrong, right? Both sides are beating their heads against each other all the time, where the grandparents not. The grandparents like, you just sit there, and I'll go get some tea, <laughs> you know? That's true. <laughs> so, what do you want to do today, <laughs> right? So we kind of we kind of want to take on that persona a little bit for ourselves in reflection, not, not the yang energy. We don't want grandma to be the yang energy. We want to use the yang energy. We want to enjoy going and finding things to do and have an expression and, and trying to get things to go our way. But when everything starts to look really, really good, grandma should come in and say, so how is this working for everybody else, right? And so you got to get yourself that moment of reflection so that you can kind of balance out. And that's what I was using today in words of guidance and expression, is finding that balance between them. Because really, expression lacks guidance. And guidance lacks expression. And yet, they feed each other. One shapes the other. And so at the end of my email, I said the guidance allows expression to happen, but then expression has to come back to guidance to get corrected and then go off and express again. Like right? Like and so that's that student, Balance. right, it's that student-teacher relationship thing, right? We, we act, the student is looking to the teacher for guidance and the teacher is giving them a little bit of guidance and going, okay, well, what would you do with that? Go, show me what you would do with it, right? And letting the expression happen from the youthful mind. And so it's that great con um, contradiction in life is you, you want them to do it the right way, but at the same time, if they find a new way to do it, is that wrong? Mm -hmm. Right? So only wisdom has seen it multiple times and tried many, many different ways and gone, uh, this is the best way to do it, but how would you do it? And if they come up with one that you know is going to fail, you could say, well, um, let's think about that for a minute. But if it's a way that could work, well, let them try it because they need to gain wisdom and they only learn it through failure. And so we're kind of at that time of the year. Um, I talked last week and the week before. We're entering a period where there's sudden illness, sudden death, but also great spontaneity and great opportunity. There's a lot of a lot of that kind of energy is all happening right now. And so when that's happening, grandma comes in and says, sit down, let me go get you a cup of tea, right? And so from all the movement we've been talking about the last couple of weeks, we're gonna slow down the movement and really think about how the movement is supposed to be used specifically. And then we're going to play with the expression part and I'm gonna let you just 
make the move, do it, see what happens, right? That kind of thing. All right. So uh, first of all, let's go ahead and either sit or stand in the uh, Qigong practice at standing uh, breathing position. And then take a couple of breaths and just let the body settle down, feel the weight sink down to the feet so you can feel it right down connected to the ground. You may notice that you first feel a little wobbly and you're not right quite on the toes or on the heels, you're kind of wobbly. That's, that's exactly why we want to think about the weight sinking down and connecting to the feet and being down at the feet. Just take a couple, couple breaths there. Imagine grandma's going to get the hot water to make tea. So everything should be settled now. When you breathe, feel the chest lift up and open. And that makes the shoulders kind of open and the arms expand a little bit. And when you exhale, feel the arms and the shoulders kind of collapse as the lungs collapse around the lungs and you exhale all the way. Try that a couple of times and just, just feel the little tiny movements of the body. Everybody have a sense of that? And roll back onto the heels just a little bit. Just, just a slight adjustment in the body and you can feel the heels. Don't forget the breath. And then a slight movement forward and feel the toes or the balls of the feet. And then slide, slowly, slowly roll from the front of the toes or the balls of the feet back to the heels. And then back to the toes again. Feel how small the movement is. Just this little tiny movement makes it roll right to the heel and a little bit move forward and you're back on the toes. It's a very, very slight movement of the body. So that is yin teaching yang. Because the movement itself is yang, but that little tiny effort that makes it happen from the heels to the toes and back again is yin guiding yang. And then go ahead and relax. And so when we do the Tai Chi moves, we really make these big moves, right? When the winter time, everything was really small and we were doing these little tiny movements and it was generating a lot of force. We were generating a lot of Chi in the body. Well, now the body wants to move because of the summer and so we're doing these great big movements and it's really showing the expansion and showing the contraction and making it really exaggerated. But at the same time, it's still grandma in there can just a little bit, just a little bit, right? So let's think about that. Um, uh, brush knee is probably the easiest one for, for everybody to start with. So pick a leg, same leg that's forward, the same hand that's gonna brush the knee. And the other hand starts up by the ear. And I'm not going to move either of my hands. All I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my body aligned with my feet this way. And as I exhale, I'm just going to turn my waist and bend my knees slightly so that I can sit down. And as I inhale, I'm going to come back. 
rise up slightly and then as I exhale I'm going to turn my shoulders and waist and sit down slightly. So relax the shoulders, relax the chest, just turn as you exhale and sit down slightly. Good. Okay, so let's switch feet, give the other side a try. So this time the front leg, the front arm is prepared to brush the knee. I'm turned the same direction that my feet are at the moment. My hands up by the ear. I start with an inhale. As I exhale, I'm just going to turn my shoulders and sit down slightly. And then as I inhale, I'm going to turn back and lift up just slightly. And then exhale, roll the shoulders, roll the waist slightly, and then come back. Okay, so everybody should notice that the arms are making great strides at moving, and yet you're not moving your arms. All you're doing is turning your shoulders, right? Good. So this is yin teaching yang, right? This great big movement looks like it's a yang movement, but it's all happening from yin, right? Yin is just making the simple movement and it's looking big. It's giving yang power by just simply saying, huh, right? Real simple, right? It's really, 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 really simple. So the same thing with um, sowing seeds or parting the wild horse's mane, which is, which is a long, sweeping, lifting hand, like I'm grabbing seeds and I'm throwing them out. I'm going to broadcast the seeds out and then cover the bag with my other hand. Same thing if I reach to the other side, I reach in the bag of seeds and I broadcast them out and the other hand closes the bag. So pick a leg. The leg that's forward is the leg that's going to be doing the job and we're sowing seeds. So this hand goes in my pocket. The other hand's just up by my ear, almost the same. And then I'm just going to inhale this time and turn forward. And then exhale and come back. Inhale and turn forward. And this one lifts up slightly instead of sitting down. So I'm coming forward and lifting up slightly. And then when I come back and exhale, I'm going to sit down slightly. Again. And back. Good. One more. And watch where your, body, watch where your arms go. I mean, you're not moving your arms, and yet all you have to do is twist your body, and the arms are going quite a distance. Right? Let's switch feet. So other side, I reach into the pocket, other hands up in the air slightly. I'm going to inhale and rise up, turn forward. My hand should make it all the way to my other hip almost. And then come back as I exhale. Inhale up and across, turning the waist. Feet planted firmly on the ground, exhale back. And inhale, up. And relax. Okay. So, that kind of expresses the movement itself. Without us actually doing the movement, it's simple expression. All I'm doing is I'm lifting up and turning, and the hand is doing what the hand should be doing, without really having to move very much, right? But it's not the move, right? The move, the move is meant to do something. And so then the guidance comes in, as I said last week, this is a martial art. And so it's designed to have cover, guarding, and then attacking. And so it has that character of both coming in and guarding the body, and then coming up to expand and express the defense move. And so when we do this, there's a couple of things to remember about martial arts, um, and that is the box. 
So whenever we talk about uh, defending the body, we do talk about defending the areas that are vulnerable, right? So there's this area that's this big by about this wide, right? If somebody was to throw a punch over here, do I have to worry about it, right? It's passing by. Mm -hmm. Wave, you know, let it, let it go, right? If someone's attacking in this area, should I defend? Probably, right? This is, this is the area that we need to be defending. And so the problem then becomes, well, if I'm going to make a move, and that move is supposed to block the box, do I need to leave the box? No, right? And so if I'm going to do this move, for instance, if my hand passes outside the box, it's wasted energy, right? And so I want to see the box in front of me to some degree, and I want to make the move happen inside that box. I want to find that visual, if we can, to see where that's happening, right? So the same thing with the brush knee exercise. If I'm brushing knee, all I have to do is guard my knee, then I don't need to brush way out here anywhere. I'm just going to brush to the edge of the box and stop. And that's as far as I need to go because there's no reason to go any further. It's wasted energy, right? So the next thing we look at is this, this other hand, especially in brush knee, because brush knee's got this flailing hand that just does something, right? So it stays in the box next to my ear and pushes straight out in front of me as if it was on a rail. So there's a rail leaving the side of my head and going straight out to in front of me, and I just want it to slide straight out, kind of like I'm throwing a ball straight out in front of me. As I turn my shoulders, it just pivots or pushes straight out, right? So switch feet. Other sides, the same idea. So let's start with the um, sowing seeds. If I'm doing sowing seeds, I want to come up and stop right on the side of my body. Lifts up and slides out in front and just kind of pauses there for a moment. Good. And then the brush knee right from here. So we've got the hands up by the ear. Elbow is down and in. And if I push straight out in front of me, it'll guide, or my shoulders turn, it'll guide the hand straight out in front. There's no, no big swing and, and not leaving the box. Everything stays in the box. So far, so good? OK. Thus ends the restrictive part of the session. Now we're going to kind of see, well, what does the body feel like when I do that move? And what does it want to do, right? So this is a chance for you to just kind of play with it. Swing your arms if they feel like swinging. Move the way it feels like moving. And then we'll look back on it and see how it feels. OK? All right, so start in the uh, brush knee position. And then, of course, we know what brush knee is supposed to look like to some degree. But what else can happen? So just kind of play with the body movement and the swinging of the arms and look at the way that it might move for you and think about it. Is it low? Is it high? Does it come up from underneath? Does it come in from the outside? What else, can, what else could happen? How does, it, how does it feel when your body is turning and sliding forward and backwards? Just kind of move around and get an idea of how the move could move with whatever might come up. When you get a, get a chance, switch feet and kind of play with the other side a little bit. See what that does. So far, so good. OK, so the other one was uh, sowing seeds. So go back to the first leg, whichever leg was out. 
And so sowing seeds comes up from the hip and then up and out slightly. But what if it was down low? What if both hands went together? And then when you get a chance, switch feet, try the other side. Well, so so what came out? So what came out? Did anybody find anything interesting? No, I noticed that my this leg really controls my movement. I don't go beyond the box. That's what I noticed. And then the other leg? Oh, the same thing. Oh, okay. But you feel the lead leg is the one that's guiding where you are? Exactly. Oh. Interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, tells me, it tells me, okay, stop. That's right, stop. stop. Don't go any further. Yes. <laughs> Pat, anything from your end? I wanted to move. I wanted to go with the other leg after a while. Yeah, yeah. Carry it forward. Ah, right, yes. Very good point. <laughs> Susan, anything from your side? No, I noticed it's good. You're the lower back. The lower back. Right, right. The waist, the core area in the waist. Excellent, excellent observations. So we probably hit everything. We hit the fact that the, the feet are the foundation and the direction and the placement of the feet are very important in both Tai Chi and the martial arts. And so wouldn't that reflect on our daily activities? The feet kind of mean something, where we put them when we're resting, how we position ourselves when we're standing or moving has a, a lot to do with the way things work with the body the moving forward instead of sitting in one place and rocking back and forth while that feels very satisfying and very methodical well you know but the move is really meant to continue on right the movement is supposed to have purpose direction and focus and so you feel like you want to take another step oh and and i want to take it right and so you get that's very good observation and then susan our trunk um, no, actually, that's the balance. balance. The balance of yin and yang is motion, right? Now, a lot of the times what they say is yang is not the activity of something that's yin. It's the thing that's yang, right? And so when we see the wind blow, we don't see it blow. We see it blowing things like the trees and the leaves and our hair and everything's blowing, right? And so all of that energy that's out there is yin. It moving stuff is yang, right? My energy making me move is yin. I moving is yang, right? And so it's kind of one of those, uh, it's a good point, but it's, it's, it's gray because they're not separate right they're not really separated and so then susan brought up the idea that it's really coming from the waist you have to remain relaxed and allow that the turning and the fluidity to happen and so that really is the connection between yin and yang is that fluidity right transferring yin and yang the chi from yin and yang and back again and this brings up a great discussion because we're actually in the time of year where man connects to earth and the heaven, yin and yang.
right? And so whenever you read about Taoism and do any of the studies, the big thing is yin and yang. But the count number is three. The big count number is three. So why, wait a minute, you just said yin and yang is most important, but that's only two. Why is three the important number? Because it represents man. It represents man. I am here standing on the earth. Heaven connects to the top of my head. I am that connection between heaven and earth. That's right. So all of the energy from heaven and earth flow through man. Religions have been praising this for years as being, you know, you are the, what do they say? Embodiment of God, right? All of the, all of the energy that he has given flows through you. Well, Taoism isn't very different from saying that whole idea is very accurate. We absorb the energy of earth. We eat food, we breathe air, we do all these things. And yet we meditate and we think. And those things aren't physical. They're ephemeral, right? They come to us. My wife has very often said, you know, everybody discovered fire around the same time, but they couldn't talk to each other. So how could somebody in South America and somebody in Russia both come up with fire in a short period of time? How about bow and arrow or the Clovis point or, you know, any of these numbers of theories, the idea of agriculture, right? Sitting still instead of meandering around and hunting and getting food and finding food, but actually planting the food, growing the food, eating the food and replanting the food next year, all kind of hit the earth around the same hundred years, but they couldn't talk to each other. There was no internet, there, you know, no cell phones, you know, none of that could happen. So it's interesting to kind of put that on our, in our back burner and think that we kind of connect to this energy that's around us. And when that energy is going on somewhere else, we're kind of hearing about it. In the back of our spirit mind, we're kind of hearing about it. When the ground is doing something, we know about it in the body, right? When it gets cold, What's the first thing to get cold? Anybody's got a, you shiver. It comes from your stomach, right? You shiver in here, right? And that's the connection. That's the connection of the body to the earth. It recognizes when it's warm, right? It recognizes when it's cold, but it's not in the mind. The mind isn't doing that. So somehow we're that bridge. And this time of year, it's really easy to kind of see the connection between the energy in the sun, the energy in the ground, and we as that. And so they're yin and yang, right? There brings us back to that yin and yang thing is the most important is recognizing the balance between us, the spirit, the earth, us, right? In, as, as the medium that it all transfers for. Okay, enough of that long lecture-ish thing. So, it, any questions about the movement and how that movement goes? No? Um, let's see, I think we ran a little short today. Do we want to continue? Yeah. Uh, oh. Let's see where we are. 29 minutes. Okay, so let's take, uh, let's take a minute and walk through the moves. So as we, were, as we were talking about earlier, the movements themselves are very simple, right? All we're doing is we're kind of opening and untwisting and then twisting back up, right? Inhale and exhale. They just, that's, that's pretty much all the movement is. But the walking movement is a little bit more coordinated in the fact that we have to kind of fall forward to the next step. And I'm always talking about this as being that's not how we're supposed to walk. We shouldn't end up in a position where we're going, right? I don't want to just fall forward and try and catch myself as my walking method. However, what we do find 
is that if we bend our knees a little bit and reach out, we can just transfer our weight from one side to the other. But now my foot's in the wrong position, so I need to come back and turn my foot so that it's in the right position to step forward, put my weight back on it again, and step out. Roll my foot in, and then roll out to that foot. I'm back to square one. I roll back, turn the foot, change weight, step out, and turn the foot in. So the feet should be parallel to each other. Roll out, roll back, turn my waist, will turn my foot, set it down, and when I step out with this foot, I want to see these two parallel with each other. So they're both pointed in the same direction. So try that a couple of times. Good. Waist turns the foot, good. Roll back, waist turns the foot. Use the waist to turn the foot. Don't think about your knee. Should be, should be all in the core. If you're grinding your foot into the ground, you'll have trouble later. <laughs> So far so good? Okay, so that's the, most, that's the most common Tai Chi movement exercise. Whenever you see people learning Tai Chi, it's one of the first things to do is teach you to walk. And that's the walking exercise, right? All from the waist. And so then comes what's called Bagua walking or circle walking. And so circle walking is like you're walking either on ice or in snow or sand, and you just slide your foot along the ground. And so Bagua is primarily done in a circle. I shouldn't say primarily. Um, Dragon Chen Bagua is primarily done in a circle. So circle walking is, is a big thing with the exercise. And the concept is that I'm going to slide my foot out on the ground and then slide my foot out along the ground and slide my foot out, right? And so I'm not worried about this turning my foot thing as much because the feet are always going to go in one direction or another, depending on which circle I'm. If I'm going this way, then this, my feet are always going to be going the circle this way, and I don't have to change my feet. If I'm going this way, it's the same thing. I'm just turning in to the circle with my feet and they just kind of slide along the ground, they never really pick up, right? So you're always kind of sliding along the ground. And so I, when I first taught youngsters um, the uh, um, karate exercises, because a lot of the instruction I did was, was with the karate uh, school, um, is we learned to, to do this really low, straight-footed slide. And so I had them stand in this position and then slide forward without moving their bodies up and down. And so they're always keeping their knees bent and just sliding through the middle without changing their feet at all. You learn to be really gentle and really soft with your feet because you don't have the chance to clunk your feet. It kind of gives you that sense of floating yeah <laughs> it's not easy it takes it takes some practice but it builds up a lot of strength in the legs it builds up a lot of coordination and you learn not to stomp your feet is it's because it's that same bagua kind of feel of sliding across the ground but you're staying down and just floating across the ground and allowing the legs to do all of the work you don't want the body to do any of the work it all comes from the legs so it's a great leg building exercise. It's a good um, sensation on the feet, feeling, feeling the ground exercise. Um, and so those are things to try and play with, right? That's the expression portion of the class. Would Just play with them. It's extremely good to do barefoot. All of these exercises are very well um, done in the grass or on the beach in bare feet in a place where you can trust that there is no broken glass or needles or 
you know, things like that. So, so unless you're sure, yes. wear shoes. <laughs> Defend yourself against the bad ends of the world, please. Um, and so, yes, um, snow if your feet can handle it, um, sand if you've got a clean beach, grass is really, really good because you're in contact with moist soil. First thing in the morning is best, not last thing in the afternoon. Um, the dew of the morning has a specific energy in it and absorbing it through your feet is supposed to be phenomenal for health and recovery. And so it's one of the things that we talked about in the spring. It was a really big thing. Now it's still happening because we're in California and we have all four seasons in one day. So <clears throat> we do kind of run into that, that funny condition that still you get a couple of hot days and then we get fog in the morning and it's cold again for a few days. Well, first thing in the morning when that fog is out there, the dew on the grass, beneficial, highly beneficial. It's good stuff. Okay. Um, without we have water now for your grass. That's right. We don't. And, and it will be brown soon and then it'll be sharp. And you don't want to walk on it <laughs> in bare feet. Okay. Any, any last thoughts? Any other ideas? Okay, well, let's go ahead and close. Uh, start in the standing position. Bend the knees slightly so that they're over the toes. Lift up the back, open the chest. Rest the tip of the tongue on the roof of the mouth just behind the front teeth. And when you're ready, turn the palms out. Inhale, rise up. Gathering the universal chi. So, guiding it down through the top of the head, the Bai Hui point. And take a breath at the heart and lungs. Guide it down the spine to the Dan Tian and Ming Mun, just below the belly button. Take a breath there. And guide it down the legs, through the bones and the marrow, down to the bottoms of the feet, the bubbling spring point. Take a breath there. <coughs> Take a couple more breaths and just feel the weight of the body sink to the feet. And feel the feet connected firmly to the ground. When you're ready, palms out, inhale, rise up. So. Take a breath at the heart and lungs. And the Dan Tian and Ming Man. And the bubbling spring points to the bottoms of the feet. And a couple more breaths. Feel the feet kind of sink into the ground. Feel the energy going into the ground with each breath. Palms out, inhale, rise up. So. Take a breath at the heart and lungs. Dan Tian and Ming Man. And the 
bubbling spring points at the bottoms of the feet. And a couple more breaths. Feel the energy all around you. Flowing through you, connecting to you. thoughts or questions thank you all for coming enjoy the rest of the week we'll see you next week hopefully <laughs>